Hey, what's going on, everybody? Anime here with another episode of Anime Stop Motion Reviews. Today, we'll be taking a look at the Marvel Legends Vulture from the Demo Goblin Build a Figure Wave. This figure features Adrian Toomes donning his classic Vulture attire and also features an extra head sculpt with the Blacky Drago helmet on, although the head sculpt with the helmet attached seems to be the same default head sculpt of Toomes. Right off the bat, this figure has been getting generally positive reviews from the action figure collecting community all over, and I'd have to agree. This is an excellent figure of a classic vulture many people have probably been waiting for from Hasbro to complete their Sinister Six faction. As of this review today, I've noticed that this figure seems to be scarce in the wild, just looking at online retailers. Seems people are really after this guy, but it looks like Big Bad Toy Store still has him up for pre-order, so you might be able to still get your hands on him if you're looking. Anyways, let's take a closer look at the packaging before we take a closer look at what's inside, shall we? Once again, the figure comes in the older style Marvel Legends packaging as Hasbro has reverted back to that style. The box is your standard black Marvel Legends box branded with the Spider-Man branding, the usual Legends logo, Build-A-Figure logo, and Hasbro logo in their usual corners, Agent Warning text, and of course, the name of the figure, Marvel's Vulture. An open window design shows off the figure in a neutral vanilla pose, along with some of its accessories. On the side of the box, we've got a really nice depiction of Adrian Toomes as the vulture. And on the back, you've got a product shot of the figure from waist up with the wings attached, the usual write-up in the corner along with the usual logos and fine prints scattered throughout, and a look at the figures in the wave and the build-a-figure pieces that come with each to make the Demo Goblin figure. Along the other side of the spine, we have the exact same artwork but mirrored. On the top of the box, we've got a spot-varnished Spider-Man emblem. And on the bottom, we've got a barcode with the usual fine print and the usual icons and labels throughout. With the figure still in its plastic, we can see that the figure comes in two plastic shells. The front houses the figure itself, along with the extra helmeted head and a build-a-figure piece. In this case, it's Demo Goblin's head. On the back portion, we have the wings laid out in separate pieces, along with the cardboard backing in white with gray webbing designs. And with the figure freed from the plastic, the vulture spreads his wings and flies. But let's talk about the aesthetics. My god, this is an awesome figure. The head sculpt is fantastic. The reuse of the body fits. There is an argument to be made that it is a little too fit for an old man of Tomb's stature. But the suit is supposed to have a side effect that makes Tomb's physically fit. I've seen him depicted both ways as a more average bodied individual and as a very athletically fit person. There's very little to screw up with this figure as he generally has very little to paint being mostly all green. The slight touches of details are clean and nice. The lack of other details don't seem to bother me really too much. And what's most important, the face sculpt looks fantastic in both sculpt, expression, and paint applications. The large, creepy old man hands suits him well and feels very bird-like in some ways. And the wings, though separated into two pieces, works for the most part. Although, I should note, there is word out there that a revised version of this figure with different and superior wing attachment points is out in the wild. Mine still utilizes the older version, so your mileage may vary. So let's get this guy off the stand and see what makes him such a good figure. But first, let's go through some of his measurements. So the figure stands at just about 6 and a quarter inch tall, just slightly above that, which makes him about 6 feet 3, a bit tall to be the vulture, whose comic height is actually around 5 feet 11. And as you can see, he weighs in at about 51 grams, scaled up to around 51 kilograms. That would make him about 112 pounds. So a little shy of 175 pounds, which is his comic weight. His wings come in two pieces, a longer portion, which attaches to the forearm and a shorter portion, which attaches to the shoulder, or in the case of the newer revised version, the biceps. They are nicely laid out with a lighter yellow green near the tips and a darker hue of green at the top. There are some slight line sculpting to delineate separate wing portions. And there is concentric line sculpts that separate the smaller inner wings, middle wings, and longer wings. On the back portion of the wing, there is barely any sculpt, and what seems like some slight line sculpting is even less apparent here. The wings do not have the section cuts like the other side, so it's just one solid piece. Letters on the small tabs where the wings plug into the figure tells which wing is for either right or left. However, it doesn't really matter as they plug in fine either way. You just either have to have the wing sections on the inner or outer part of the figure, depending on how you plug them in. My advice would be to plug them with the sectional part of the wings facing most prominently where you see when you have them displayed. So if you mainly see the inside of the wings, flip them so the sectional parts are there, and if you mainly see the outside, vice versa with the sectional parts. 
The other accessory the figure comes with is the tomb's head sculpt with a more neutral face and a black Drago helmet on. What's really nice about this helmet is that it has the really nice line sculpting that should have been used for the rest of the figure. The face sculpt itself is painted fairly well with some nice pinkish hues to the surrounding eye area, and there's no wonkiness to the eyes or anything of that sort. Taking a closer look at the figure itself, the head sculpt is an excellent head sculpt like I said before with a very nice expression. Tombs has a cartoonishly evil grin, big doughy eyes, and the pinkish hue found on the other head sculpt as well. The teeth are painted fairly clean. The paint overall is clean with no extra marks and paints. There are some nice old person line details that are subtly found placed around the mouth and cheek sections. He has some dark age spots along the right side of his head. And notably, his neck seems to have quite a prominent line where the figure is connected. It's quite apparent and it seems to be that way for a lot of people's figures from what I've seen. Now as you can see, he does use a Spider-Man body that has been used for many different Spider-Man figures, such as the Big Time Spider-Man. However, he has those large claw-like hands that look rather nice. It's always a better thing to have larger hands than smaller ones, so I'll take it. Overall, the proportions are quite nice for this figure. The body lacks the nice sculpted line detail found on the helmet. Instead, it utilizes a paint job that hints at those textures. It would have definitely been better to have those line details, and this is definitely an area where Hasbro skimped out on by reusing this body mold. The paint job is mainly found only on the front, on the chest and abs, and the shoulders and biceps. It's achieved through a color variation of a lighter yellow-green hue into the darker bluish-green mold. I think it adds just enough, but like I said, continuing the line sculpt from the helmet would have been more ideal. The way it's done, it kind of makes it look like he's Watermelon Man rather than the Vulture. The back has a port in the center spine between the shoulders, as well as ports for the wings. This version is the earlier version with the insertion portion of the inside wing at the shoulders instead of the tricep. The legs are skinny and lanky and seem a bit shiny from the upper thigh cut down. However, that's more noticeable because of the camera and lighting and is less obvious in normal conditions. And he's got these nice, craggly, creepy old guy hands, which goes perfectly with his vulture aesthetic, looking like scavenging bird claws. Taking a look at the articulation starting off with the top of the head. Now, I don't expect there to be much obstruction since he's just bald. He doesn't have any hair or a beard or anything to obstruct his articulation. So as you can see, you can get his head to look down pretty much all the way. And you can get him to look all the way up pretty much as well. And like I said, since he doesn't really have anything obstructing his uh, head articulation, he can also shift his head forwards and backwards. The white feathered collar piece is also a separate piece, so you can adjust it to your liking. And as usual, you can expect his head to have full rotation. Arms can extend out laterally way past 90. Double jointed elbows with a wide range of bend. Rotation points at the wrist, the upper bicep, and the shoulder, as well as a much appreciated butterfly joint. He does have an ab crunch with not a whole lot of mobility, but what's there does suffice, and it also doesn't look too ugly. A waist cut with rotation. For the lower half of the articulation, he does have that limited split ability that's found on this Spider-Man body mold. Although for the vulture, it works just fine. There is an upper thigh cut. The legs do kick up pretty high. And they pretty much can kick back as much as you'd possibly want, even rotating all the way through. Double jointed knees. Toes bend in about this much. And back like so. There is ankle pivot and peg holes at the bottom. And for some size and body comparisons, here he is up against the big time Spider-Man. And as you can see, he uses the Spider-Man body. And this is how the Vulture compares to some of the younger spider folk. So we have Gwen and Miles from the, well, the Gwen and Miles two pack. And this is how the Vulture compares to the seven inch Marvel Select Venom figure. This is the second Venom figure, the one with the backpack and all the accessories that attach to it or back piece, I guess. And here he stands next to the Marvel Select Carnage, which is a humongous figure. And here he is compared to the Marvel Legends MCU Vulture. So might as well have his helmet on in this comparison. So that is it for this review of the Marvel Legends Vulture from the Demo Goblin Build-A-Figure wave. This quite possibly is the best figure from this wave, maybe along with the Shang-Chi figure. Although I have quite a few gripes with that figure and not so much this one. I think overall this figure is one of the better looking Legends figures out there. 
People might have their gripes about certain things like the wings being separate pieces, but I think it's kind of well hidden and I prefer the freedom the design affords the articulation that I think a solid piece might not. Honestly, my only gripe with the figure, and it's not really that big of a deal to me to be honest, is that I wish they would have given the suit the same sculpted texture treatment as the helmet. But knowing Hasbro, if they had done that, they probably wouldn't have given the body the same paint app treatment as this. Still, I think I would have preferred that if that was how it went. Of course, the Spider-Man body mold they went with fits Vulture, so I do like it nonetheless. Anyways, thanks for sticking around until the end if you did. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. I'll be sure to put up more videos from time to time, but honestly, I've been really busy. I'm currently in the process of moving, so that's why I've been gone for a while. But definitely when things get settled, things will return back to normal. Anyways, thanks again guys, and I'll see you guys next time.